On Friday 8th of May, the Australian Government released a three-stage roadmap to ease lockdown restrictions over the upcoming months. Each individual state and territory will move at different times based on their local conditions. Queensland, for example, will move to Stage 1 this coming Friday night, 15th of May 2020. But despite this being a future event, what did people do over the weekend? They went shopping. Thousands of shoppers filled shopping centres around the country. I'm guilty as well. My family and I went out on the weekend and witnessed the chaos firsthand. It was like the lead up to Christmas. There were people everywhere. Some commentators have accused Australians of being stupid for doing this. Even Australia's Chief Medical Officer, Brendan Murphy, has called on people to exercise personal responsibility. He wasn't too pleased with people's social distancing efforts over the weekend. As I went to a shopping centre myself and saw lots of people down there I knew – co-workers, university lecturers, PhD students – I don't think stupid is the right word here. A more accurate description would be excitement. People were excited, and I don't blame them. When they saw news on the lockdown restrictions being eased, the very next day, they went out shopping. Now in my view, this isn't so surprising. First of all, people have been in lockdown for the last six weeks. They're antsy. They're restless. They want to get out. People just want back a sense of normalcy in their lives. Secondly, the government have increased welfare payments over the last few weeks through their job seeker and job keeper payments. Consequently, people have money to spend. Thirdly, it was the day before Mother's Day. People wanted to buy gifts or food or whatever. And then the straw that broke the camel's back. The announcement to ease lockdown restrictions. The mere mention of easing lockdown restrictions was enough to get people excited and go out shopping. Of course they did. You didn't have to be a behavioural scientist to figure it out. As I said in the title, collective stupidity? No. This is an obvious result of the policy put in place. What if the opposite were true? What if the government closed all the shops and cut people's welfare? Well, the result would be equally obvious. There would be more homelessness. There would be more criminality. If people couldn't buy food, they'd go out and steal it. Some commentators might label these people as evil or criminals or whatever, but ultimately, people are just reacting to the situation in a very predictable way. So of course, in our current situation, if you open the shops and you give people money, people will go out and shop. No surprises there. It was funny on the weekend. When I was in the local shopping centre with my family, there were only two social distancing rules being enforced. The first rule, that was really only enforced by some of the larger retailers, was how many people could enter. For example, at Kmart and Target, you had to line up to get in. As soon as somebody left, you were allowed to enter. We literally only had to wait a minute or two before you were allowed to go in. But despite these measures, there were still hundreds of people inside. The second rule was that you were not allowed to sit down to eat, which in itself was quite funny because the food court was essentially open. You could buy as much takeaway food as you liked. Again, you didn't have to be a behavioural scientist to figure out what people were going to do. Thousands of people went shopping. Hundreds of people got hungry. Unsurprisingly, people bought food and started eating it. They sat down on sofas. They sat down on benches. They even sat down on the floor in some instances. The shopping centre's security guards had quite a task trying to get everybody to do the right thing. I saw them going around telling people that they couldn't sit down to eat. Most people complied with their directions, but some put up a bit of a verbal fight. In those situations, more guards were called in, and then pretty much 100% of people complied. But what did people end up doing? They ended up walking around and eating. People were pushing their shopping trolleys while having lunch. I did this too. I've got two young children who, of course, after 30 minutes or an hour of walking around, started getting hungry. So I bought some food, washed their hands, and they ate while I pushed them around in the trolley. The security guards didn't seem to mind. They were just happy that people weren't sitting down. But we've got to ask ourselves, what is all this for? Well, officially, to stop the spread of coronavirus. But by not allowing people to sit down and eat, but yet allowing thousands of people to cram into an enclosed shopping centre, is this really stopping anything? No, of course not. If there was even a single case of coronavirus in the centre, potentially thousands of people were exposed to it. All of this has nothing to do with saving people's lives. All of this has to do with reopening the economy. 
Luckily in Queensland at least, we haven't had any new coronavirus cases over the last few days, but one thing that this little fiasco has taught us is that the three-stage roadmap is essentially useless. I'm not saying that the intention wasn't good, but based on people's behaviour, there is no such thing as a gradual easing of restrictions. In most people's eyes, they're either in lockdown or they're not. Just look at the evidence. We haven't even reached stage one, and people have already started cramming into shopping centres. As I said before, the mere mention of easing lockdown restrictions from a psychological point of view was enough to get people excited and go out shopping. Of course they did. To expect otherwise was stupid. 